The Emmys that you just watched this evening, they were possible because of one Utah inventor, Thalo T. Farnsworth, and what others could not do, he put images with radio waves. Now, after years of improvement, the result is the television monitor you're now watching here. Here's Craigworth's tribute to the father of TV. The story is complete with first-person interviews of those who were there that night in 1927 when TV was invented. ABC is proud to present the sound of the future. This is what millions of happy ABC viewers will be watching in the 21st century. Saturday night at 8.30, 7.30 Central Time. Ah, oh, yes, it was the future. When you look at the early days, few whiz-bang inventions were as swell as television. For it brought unbelievable programs to your house right through the air. Now that's great TV. And it was a Utahn who made this all possible. Philo T. Farnsworth lived to see TV become part of almost every American household before he would leave us. The former BYU student's drawings remain a treasure of science and ingenuity. They are housed in box after box at the University of Utah's Marriott Library. He took his experiments to this San Francisco laboratory. His main partner in the experimentation was his wife. Pam Farnsworth finally received recognition for her achievements as part of the scientific team before she died in 2006. He said, I'm sorry, but I have to tell you that there's another woman in my life. And before I could faint, he said, and her name is television. And uh, the only way we'll have as much time together as I'd like is if you work with me. How about it? Farnsworth started working morning, noon, and night. He added an assistant from Utah. And I was offered a job by mail. I didn't see the man, didn't see Philo, but I accepted it because it sounded like an interesting sort of thing and it's a little increase in salary over what I'd been having. <laughs> And he tried over and over, mostly with disappointing results. The professors in BYU and UC Berkeley and Stanford had all told Phil that his ideas on television were just impossible. Leave it go. You'd just be sorry you did it. Phil knew he could do it, and so he just didn't pay any attention. And from then on, uh, nothing was impossible. Farnsworth was stubborn. He was driven. There must be a way to transmit an image through the air. And on September 7th, 1927, Mr. and Mrs. Farnsworth and Carl Christensen succeeded. Haunting images followed a first test of a simple line. We had a very simple picture, which is nothing more than black and white lines on a plate. And it picked up, and then on the, on the demonstration, they saw the black and white lines on the, re, on the recorder. The, uh reporters were so um, impressed with the fact that here this farm-bred boy had come up with the mechanic, I mean, the electronic television when all of these big companies with all the money in the world couldn't do it. More and more images appeared, each a piece of magic. And like any good magic show, Farnsworth took it on the road. He had invented TV. So what would a Philo T. Farnsworth thought of television today? You know what, he probably wouldn't have been surprised because after all, he had invented what they said was impossible. But everyone, even the former naysayers, got into the act. Big businesses did their own traveling shows. RCA had the miracle of science. General Electric built TV demos for the World's Fair. Farnsworth would spend much of his fairly short life fighting for his rights as the inventor of TV, much of it fighting RCA. But the courts would finally agree Philo T. Farnsworth was the father of TV. Craigworth, ABC 4 News.